get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of RX Bar, P90X, Quest Nutrition, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry. Uh, This past year, we hosted events in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, Vegas. I'm sure I'm missing a few. So if you see the value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate and to get your business to the next level, go to Rise25, contact us and ask us where our next event is going to be. And I want to do a special thank you, shout out to Azrael Ratz, who hails all the way from Israel for introducing me to today's guests and Azrael helps companies find their ideal audience on Facebook and create more sales and uh, he can be found on Rats Pack Media, R-A-T-Z Pack Media.com. Today I'm very excited. We have the co-founders of Tenzo Tea, Steve O'Dell and Robbie Page. They run a matcha tea ba- company based in Santa Monica. Uh, Tenzo Matcha Green Tea, which is interesting guys, is grown in Kagoshima, Japan. So they're not getting it in like the local street corner in California. Um, Their products can be found at various coffee shops and smoothie facilities all over California and online at tenzot.co. And they cannot be found on Amazon, which we'll talk about. Uh, But a fun fact, they both played volleyball at UCLA. Robbie, I was, watching, you know, I was reading up on both of them, but Robbie was named best server by the, by the Association of Volleyball Professionals and Pro Beach Volleyball Tour at one point. And we have 6'6", six, six, and Robbie is seven feet. You cannot tell by them sitting there, seven feet tall. So thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much. How do you close the information gap? What are some of the things people should know about the product? Sure, a couple of things come to mind. First of all, like in terms of marketing and stuff, it's always great to be first. Um, it's a really big psychological principle to be the first in the consumer's mind. So in a lot of ways, it's a large advantage if you can solve the information gap properly. Uh, matcha is a powder green tea. It's originally from Japan. It's been grown and cultivated there for like a thousand years. Use meditation practice for a calm, focused energy. It's different than regular green tea because instead of using a tea bag to steep it, you dissolve it directly into your drink by whisking, shaking, blending. Yeah, uh, It's just powder green tea, really fine powder green tea from the nutrient-rich baby green tea leaves. So. Yeah. I was watching a video about some of your products when I was looking on your, your page, and there, I didn't realize there's like a bamboo matcha whisk, yeah. right? And that you need this whisk. And I got in and I started watching the video that you need this whisk to make sure like that fine powder gets mixed in with the, with the drink, right? Yeah, bamboo is the best um, possible mixing device. Like it's, uh, those are all handmade. They're like 120 prong whisks. Uh, the bamboo is flexible enough that it like, really moves well in water and it really kind of gives you a nice like, frothy finish. It's awesome, yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, benefits. So mo- most people don't know. Yeah, we gotta kind of be careful what we say here uh, with the FDA and stuff, but we could say supports, has, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. yeah, so it has a lot of antioxidants which help fight free radicals. Um, free radicals are notorious for um, being related to um, like types of cancer or neurodegenerative damage, um, and so they help. Really, just antioxidants help fight that and keep your body and brain, heart clear um, and healthy. Um, it's also got caffeine, obviously, so it's like a cup of coffee, but instead of the roller coaster up down, it provides a very stable, clean focus that lasts four to six hours, hmm. um, which is really nice because no jitters, no crash. Um, There's also a, a rare amino acid in green tea, and specifically in matcha, it's been much higher concentrations, called l which produces like alpha waves in the brain, which are said to be the meditative state of mind. 
So matcha is really interesting in terms of the energy boost because it's a very calm and focused energy versus a crazy, jittery, spiky, Hmm. feel crazy energy. Yeah. Uh, The L-theanine and caffeine pair very nicely to give you this kind of relaxed, focused, and energized state all at the same time. So how is matcha used? How do people use it? What's their common uses? I I think – do people ever use it when they're making kombucha, like kombucha, like matcha flavor kombucha or anything, or not really? Not really. Because from what you're saying, it's like there's some like <clears throat> steady caffeine in it, it as a nice flavor. It gives a green flavor. It makes me think as I brew my own kombucha, so I'm like, I should get this and sprinkle, yeah. com- you know, probably, the matcha in it. If you haven't tried it. That's probably an amazing additive. Uh, typically, we do a lot of just plain tenzo tea, which is just like matcha and water. You can put it over ice, so you can make it hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, tenzo latte with some milk. You can also like put it milk. in like a, a shaker bottle. So our water bottle here, put some matcha in. It has a little kind of like I just agitator, and then <laughs> shake it up. Um, you're good to go. Super simple. Other or, things too. We have uh, yeah. Yeah, like a nice little bowl. Put in two ounces of water, a scoop of matcha. Use the bamboo whisk to whisk it up. And then pour over more water or milk, and you have a nice latte. Those are probably the most common two ways. Um, some people also cook with that, use it as a food coloring, uh, healthy food coloring, or you can put it in smoothies and things like that. In addition to, we have a couple of really fun wholesale sh- places that serve our tea. They make matcha pies, matcha ice cream, mm. matcha donuts, um, list kind of like matcha chocolate. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So like matcha can be used almost anywhere and everywhere. Which is amazing. Yeah, I like it as far as, you know, I make a lot of smoothies just to, if you want a nice, like, green coloring. I mean, obviously, there's health benefits, too. Um, yeah, that's, love it. Um, what's the future, what do you think the future is? Um, right now, do you have a bag or do you have something you could show as far as what, what it looks like? <laughs> yeah, so we have these bags, 30 gram bags, um, and we also have a size bigger. Um, in the future, I mean, we don't want to do anything crazy, and we started with the powder just to kind of do that really, really well. Um, and our kind of our game plan is just to grow the sales, optimize revenue, um, especially in a local area, yeah, uh, specifically in LA, and then try to just keep learning, um, seeing how we can take it bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, the advantages and disadvantages of something like that, it, that you can use it for so many things, is you can use it for so many things. And you could do so many things with it, right? Like you're thinking, oh, like, we could just not do I mean, my ADD mind goes, now we have the powder. We could make this powder into capsules or make, you know, it's got health meds or make this powder into some product uh, that actually is a done, uh, someone could buy and consume. Any thoughts on that? Or you're like, no, we're just sticking right now to the course. That's definitely uh, in the vision. The plan, though, is we got to get a lot better at what we're doing currently. and cut. We want to scale this a lot more first so we can have more capital and more resources to be able to do a lot more things well. Yeah. I think it's really important to start simple. Like That's a really good point you brought up that there are a million things you can do, but if you try to do a million things at once, you end up doing nothing. Nothing so, well. Nothing well, you could say, yeah. So I guess in terms of our... Our timeline, we're looking at powdered first, um, maybe make some flavors, healthy flavors with, it, with the powder as a base, move into RTDs, ready to drinks, energy shots. Um, yeah. That direction, you know. So I always ask this guy, first of all, thank you both. This has been fantastic. Everyone should go oh, to ten, tenzot.co and check it out um, or support it wherever it is in, in California, probably growing in other places across the U.S., um, I always ask two things. One, what's been a low point, challenging, and then two, on the flip side, what's been a high point or proud moment with Tenzo T. <laughs> so maybe each of you have different low points, big challenges. What's been a low point um, in the business? Mine's pretty simple. I mean, Hardest thing that I ever did, um, we ever did was raise seed, raise our seed round was first like legitimate fundraising for a large dollar value. Um, lowest point was about like any minute right before we actually got the money, and then highest point was when we got the money. You bring a good point up actually because I had it in my notes and I didn't ask it. Is um, bootstrapping versus getting funding? So what made you decide to get funding? Um, 
kind of Rob hinted at this point that's very important, um, especially in an emerging market, is to be first. And so we wanted to raise money to grow faster. Um, how plans. how difficult was it? Uh, extreme. I mean, extremely. Um, first time raising a serious amount of money it was really hard. I had to learn so much, um, and like I said, learn it really, really well. And that was kind of really the hardest part. And also like not knowing because you're making all these bets um, that your company's going to grow and that you're going to move into an office and you're going to hire all these people and you're telling all these people all these things and you don't really know. Um, yeah. it's, just, it's extremely stressful. How do you, at that point, where, where's the, where are you at with the company when, you, when you're raising money? At this point, you're already going, you're already selling? Yeah, we grew extremely fast through quarter four of 2017. Um, like 50 to 100x growth in revenue every single month. Um, that puts us in a pretty good spot to raise more money, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. So who do yeah. you hire? Um, I think um, revenue generation was key. So we hired two people, three people to generate revenue, and then uh, one more person to help me on the op side and support that. So, uh, Rob, I want to get to your low point, but uh, Steve, so what are you feeling? Until you get that investment, it seems like you guys are doing well, right? So why is it a low point before you're getting funding? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we just like, it was all about the bets and the risks. And like, it's very, it was very, I felt very awkward telling people things that I wasn't actually sure of. Um, and like, so I just didn't know. And that, it was honestly just kind of scary. Um we weren't profitable. I mean, we were burning a lot of money and we had hired these people before we actually got the money. So we were burning cash and it was just like a, oh my gosh, like if we do not get this uh, in this actually by this day, like we yeah. will die. It's tough with the physical product because the more you're selling, the more you have to invest in more product, right? Yeah. Yeah. So cash flow is like a big thing. Yeah. Um, you can overcome that with credit lines and good, uh, good investors. Yeah. Rob, what about you? What was yeah, a low I've been, point? I've been thinking about it last like thirty seconds. I think, very generally speaking, like I have a very short-term memory for unfortunate events and bad things, which is a blessing. It's good in volleyball and in business, I guess. Yeah, right? exactly. But I'd say, like, I wouldn't pinpoint any specific like low point. I feel like the entire stretch has been a roller coaster, no doubt, and it's kind of always about like dealing with the lows and getting to the highs again, and. uh I think it, a lot of the toughest things we've really encountered or letting employees go is never fun. Like, I mean, not letting go, just parting ways. You know, it's always in the best interest of the company. It's always about doing things for the company. And when you kind of put it in your mind like that, it makes everything a lot easier. Um, I just think like there's been a lot of, you just a lot of unknown and the unknown is definitely a low point at some times because you, you there's like days when you just really don't sleep because you just you're waiting for things to play out and those are like i wouldn't call them low points but they're just kind of like oh no like we gotta just be patient you gotta just wait you gotta like yeah. take your mind off stuff ben horowitz calls it the struggle uh, which i'd highly recommend reading for any entrepreneurs listening um it's very true to kind of what we're dealing with and going through is that Great. his book, um, Hard Things About Hard Things, or, is it, or is he, does he have another one? It's in that book. Oh, it's in that well. book. Okay. You just if you Google that's a fantastic book. Yeah. Fantastic. If you Google The Struggle by Ben Horowitz, um, I honestly highly recommend every entrepreneur reads that and just gets comfortable at knowing you're going to go through that. Yes. Yes. Which, sorrow too is another great. Um, like principle, which I learned, we learned at a, a Y Combinator, a y Combinator uh, meetup. <coughs> it talks a lot about how, like, when you first start a business, you kind of have all this initial traction. People love your product; it's going great, and then you enter the trough of sorrow. You just stay there for an indefinite amount of time. You know, like I feel like we're just starting to climb out of it right now, but it took us like twelve months of just knocking on doors, getting told no a million times, having only your grandma buy things online. You know, and like not getting actual any customers like it just like is this gonna work and those are like really uncomfortable places to be but you gotta just believe in your underlying self and your goal and your mission and just let it all go you know just work on what's next so steve proud moment big milestone that you're like finally i'm off the couch with an actual with the company well i think honestly one of them could be just when i got my own bed 
and was hitting <laughs> ourselves when I had a bed. At what um, point do you get your own? Decide to get your own bed? Like what point in the company? Oh, uh, we are still very young. I mean, we were paying ourselves like pretty much nothing, like just to pay rent, and so I could buy a bed essentially, and eat. But I think also like moving up out of Long Beach into Los Angeles was a big moment in my life. I mean, I had never had my own bedroom, um, so it's really cool to finally now I have my own bedroom with a bed, um, and that was cool. But I mean, also there's so many like Rob said, it's kind of like a roller coaster. Right? We moved into a very cool office. It's nice to like have that sense of responsibility and. I mean, be able to like look at something like, yeah, we have this, we built this. Um, it's pretty cool. I'd say proud moment for me was just when the first people believed in our mission and joined our team. Um, like Brody was a very early adopter. Like he came <coughs> in, he saw what we were doing, he saw how just like I don't know, he believed in what we were doing. That's a really empowering feeling, just knowing that like you're crazy, but you're not that crazy, you know, like people, it's like, it's possible to buy in. We, I think we built, it was really cool to see kind of the culture and the mission we built and like how people, like our current team is all so gung ho and on board to dominate and excel. It's like a really powerful and amazing feeling. Guys, I want to be the first one to thank you. This has been fantastic. I loved hearing about all the, the different journeys. Everyone should check out Kenzo t.co anywhere else we should point people online to check you guys out yeah we're on instagram <laughs> at tenzo t uh, we're building a facebook group we're launching that kind of thing soon so we'll be uh, bigger check, presence yeah. there instagram website you're good to go all right cool Sweet. check it out get the powerful effects of tenzo t's matcha yeah. thanks jeremy appreciate thanks, it guys. thanks so much thanks for having us. us it's been a great it's been amazing cheers what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out better on the other side see lights like a peach if you find the sand right now i'm feeling like a hundred grand